everybody. Welcome to this month's Female Film Critics panel. And this is the show where every month I gather some of my female film critics and content creators, and we talk about our experiences. And it's just really, really fun and kind of therapeutic for me as well. So I really enjoy it. And today I have two very special guests with me. I have Jordy from Jordy's Reviews. Hi, thanks for having me. Yes. And I have Steph Koza here. Hi. <laughs> yes. And thank you both so much for joining. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm going to give you both a chance to introduce yourself and to tell us a little bit about the content that you make and, and how you got started as a movie lover. Um, what about you, Jordi? Yeah, so I run my own site called JordiReviewsIt.com. Um, and I started it probably, I guess it was like six or seven years ago. Um, I've just always been really into film and learning about how it's made and I think the first film that like really impressed me was Titanic as like a little eight-year-old and just thinking like how they built this giant boat. Um, so yeah, so just from there, I've always just loved watching movies and TV shows and started writing about them. Nice. What about you, Steph? Um, well, I have a channel where I review movies called Steph Koza vs. the Movies, the YouTube channel, and um, it's pretty new. I started it in February, but I used to review movies for another YouTube channel before that for about five years. Um, and then before that, I had just kind of always been on YouTube. Um, I had like a really horrible, cringy, like makeup tutorial YouTube channel and like a fashion one. And I've just like always been dabbling in like making videos and making short films. Um, so I've always been kind of interested in watching films and reviewing films and also making films just sort of like every part of the creative process um i went to film school and that's like really where i started getting like deeply into movies and like studying them and critiquing them and learning about the history of cinema and i just kind of have always been really a little bit obsessed with it my whole life and i i got a camcorder for christmas when i was like 10 and i started making movies and posting them on youtube and you'll never find them because they're horrible but <laughs> i just i've always had a lot of fun um yeah. learning about film and talking about it with people so um yeah <laughs> that's great i i didn't know that you'd been to film school that's great yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> So, um, Jordi, uh, I noticed that you uh, cover a lot of horror on your site and probably partly because it's October. It's just, mm -hmm. we just had that. So uh, what is it that appeals to you or draws you in? What do you think makes for like a really good horror movie? Yeah, I weirdly enough hated horror movies growing up. Um, I watched like a couple of like weird things like Gremlins and Nightmare Before Christmas. Like I always loved those movies, but like a real horror movie always really scared me. Um, but yeah, then like in high school, I don't know what happened, but like a like switch flipped on and I was like, I absolutely love scary movies. I just love suspense and like that rush of being scared. So I like reviewing those because I think they're just so much fun. And I think even if you have kind of like a bad film overall, you could still have fun with it with like some scares and things like that. So um, yeah, I definitely go for a lot of horror movies and that's usually what I do with my friends and we just share different recommendations for horror movies. Um, and yeah, I just did 31 days of Halloween. So covered lots of horror movies last mm -hmm. month. Yeah, did you have a favorite of the 31? I think there was a film called Censor that I really liked. Um, and I think it was cause it, is based on like a film um, rating, like a girl that rates the different like horror movies and like rates them NC-17 or says they're rated R or something. So it's kind of like a little bit of like industry based film. Um, and it was really weird and mm -hmm. great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, Steph, you cover a lot of superhero movie content on your channel. And uh, did you grow up kind of either watching both Marvel or in DC or one more than the other, or uh, what was your kind of experience with superheroes? Yeah, um, well, I grew up reading a lot of comics. Uh, I was really into Spider-Man when I was a kid. Um, so, but I, but I was also, I, I think Spider-Man was like my entryway. And then I got really into DC comics and really into Batman. I love Batman, he's my favorite. Um, and so, I wouldn't, I don't like to pick sides. Like I like Marvel and I like DC. I think like as far as comics go, I've always been a DC fangirl. Uh, as far as movies go, I definitely prefer Marvel 
the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, I do think though, the Christopher Nolan Batman series is like one of my favorite films of all time. It's also the movie I've seen the most in theaters. I saw The Dark Knight nine times in theaters. <laughs> I was like obsessed with it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think they're so yeah. fun. And um, yeah, I don't really know how yeah. I got into it. It was just like something that always attracted me as a kid. And so I think it's a little bit nostalgic for me, like now as an adult, um, it's just sort of like a fun movie going experience that always like reminds me of my childhood and like brings out the kid in me. And like, they're just fun to talk about, even if they're not like, you know, Martin Scorsese's favorite movies, I think they're so fun. <laughs> and like, it's fine if they're, even if they're, even if it's a bad superhero movie, it's still usually going to be fun. Kind of like what you were saying already about horror, like weirdly, even though they're so different genres, like you can have a bad superhero movie and still have so much fun with it. So, yeah. 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 I mean, that's why I think it's a shame that the whole internet discourse becomes so toxic around them because it, it removes it. I mean, I, I'm actually a fan of the genre, but I become not a fan because it just becomes so unpleasant to talk about him. Yeah. And I'm so tired of, of talking about Spider-Man and the movie hasn't come out yet. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I feel like we know so much about it too. Like things just keep yeah. me and it's like, I just want to watch the movie. Like I stop talking about it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we have both, all three of us have been pretty active, I think in the uh, film festivals this season, this year. Um, and I'm just curious uh, what that experience has been like for both of you and maybe what some highlights that uh, stand out for you. Um, Jordi, what about you? Which ones did you cover? Yeah, so I think this year I only did South by Southwest online. Uh, last year I did Nightstream, which was a newer one um, that they adapted out of like several different festivals. Um, but yeah, I definitely, I mean, I miss the in-person festivals a lot. I feel like the online ones can be pretty tiring. And I don't know if it's because we all maybe have a bit of, um, I don't know, fatigue with being on our computers constantly. But um, I never, I never like take off of work for these online ones. Cause I'm like, well, I'm sitting at home. I can work during the day. And then I'm just like totally burnt out by yeah. the end, trying to juggle both of them. But I still love them. I I really enjoy like catching films before they come out because you kind of don't know anything about it. You get this tiny synop synopsis and you're just like, sure, I'll check it out. And some of my favorite movies have come out of festivals like way before they get released. So I do love them a lot. What about you, Steph? Yeah, um, so I didn't start going to festivals until last year. So I've only gone to virtual festivals. I've never been to one in person. Um, and I definitely agree, they are a little bit exhausting. And I always feel weird telling people that because it's like, oh yeah, I'm just sitting at home watching movies all day, but I'm just like, beat. <laughs> like it takes so much out of you. Yeah. Um, and I was also working, I didn't take off, but um, I went to TIFF virtually, which is the most recent one I went to. Uh, and definitely like the biggest one I've ever gone to. So that was really cool for me, like sort of a milestone uh, in my film critic career. Um, but yeah, it was, it was really cool. I, I feel like it's, it's so fun to like review a movie that no one has talked about yet. And you don't have any bias. You don't have any, like no one else is telling you what's good and what's not. It's like, it's completely up to you. And I really enjoyed that. Like at first I was a little intimidated by it. I was like, oh no, what if I love this movie and everyone else hates it. But I thought it was just really fun to cover all these movies and like just sort of sift through and find what spoke to me and then like later see what other people liked. I thought that was really cool. No, because that can be intimidating. We're going to talk about unpopular opinions later on, but it can be intimidating even within a festival, whether it's virtual or in person, when there's that darling of the festival that everybody loves. And I'm like, oh, I didn't love it. Now, like this year famously, I did not love Petite Maman that everyone else was crazy yeah. for. And I broke the 100%, which made me feel like a terrible person, but there you go. And, and uh, from, that was at TIFF. Uh, and I didn't like famously, I didn't care for Britney Runs a Marathon uh, at Sundance. Like, that was a couple of years ago. 
I just really disliked her character so much that I, I found it impossible to root for her because I just felt like she was such a jerk and everybody else was. And I thought that I would love it because it's about a, you know, plus size athlete. And I've actually been a plus size, a size athlete in my, in uh, I've uh, competed in 15 uh, marathon swims. So I thought that I would totally love it, but I don't know. I just was like, wow, she's such a jerk. Why does she have to be this way? <laughs> <to all these laughs> <people>? <laughs> um, so it can be an interesting experience when uh, you don't like the sort of cinema that is being offered at whatever the festival is. And, and, you know, they, they say that for Sundance, there's always those films that once you get to regular altitude, even though I live here, uh, then once you get out of that, that festival bubble, then you're like, oh, was it really as good as it was? <laughs> because a lot of times you'll have seen like four or five movies in a day and they've all been kind of not the best or underwhelming. So then you see something that's maybe like decent, good, but it, because after, but it, by the end of that day, you're like, wow, this was amazing. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so you have to be kind of, you have to be careful, <laughs> but yeah, it's been an interesting experience. I mean, we started off the year with Sundance, which was so well run, so well done the virtual uh, they, the virtual festival, they just thought of everything. I felt like to make it as sort of immersive as authentic as they possibly could. They had panels for every single movie. They even had like VR, our friend Kristen got sent a sent VR headset so that she could be in part of the, uh, of a panel. It was, <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, and I don't know. So they, and they just had a really good lineup. Uh, but then just this last few weeks, I went in person to animation is film festival in Los Angeles. And that was just an incredible experience. It was so cool. We got to see, uh, the movie bell, which is the new, um, Hamara, Hamara Hosada, Hosada film. And he was there and he introduced it. And just like the energy in that room, like you can't match it i mean it is just so exciting every seat full everyone invested he's there you know so I'm like this was so amazing you just came out of we were all just like buzzing it was so cool and uh, so yeah i think that there's something about that experience that i hope i hope Steph, that you get to go to one one of these days because it's a really cool experience yeah I, I would love to plus i feel like i've met so many cool film critic people on the internet and I have like all these friends now that I've only seen like virtually and I just like yeah I feel like that's the only time I'll ever see any of them in real life so <laughs> I'm excited to one day hopefully actually go to a festival in person and like meet all these people that I've only known as like little tiny icons on a screen mm -hmm. yeah so, I mean, I, it is really fun that's something I've been trying to do this year is kind of take little trips to meet some of my friends that I haven't uh, that are just been online friends or podcasters with me and it's been such a great experience and I hope to continue it next year. Uh, but yeah, if any of y'all coming out to Sundance, let me know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> so, uh, so Jordy, you cover a lot of television and film mm -hmm. and there's so many shows. It's un it's overwhelming. I, I swear a day doesn't go by that somebody doesn't tell me, you gotta watch this show. It's such a yeah. great show. <laughs> so I'm just curious, how do you decide kind of what to cover and what not to cover? I think I definitely was better at managing it like a couple of years ago. I think, oh, there's a cat. Um, <laughs> I think like this last like year or two, I've been really burned out. So I am pretty picky about what I choose to watch. Um, I definitely love all of Mike Flanagan's stuff. So like that will be top of the list anytime that comes out. Um, but yeah, I mean, I am more interested now in like things that are a little bit quirky and unique. Um, I really liked Only Murders in the Building. Like that was, was really, yeah. And I just thought the premise was really cool. So I'm definitely a bit pickier, but um, I even like as a critic get so many friends that are like, have you watched this? Like, let me know what you think. And I'm like, I haven't had it on my list yet. And then they're like, oh my God, we need to talk about it. I'm like, if I like, I cannot keep up. There's so many things. Every streaming network has like a million different mm -hmm. things that launch every month. Um, so yeah, it can definitely be overwhelming. But now I've just been like, what's, what's kind of quirky and really gonna be mm -hmm. 
entertaining. And I especially like things that are released one episode a week and not like a binge not series. A binge. Yeah, because then I just... I mean, I'm out of yeah. pocket for a good couple of days and no one can contact me. <laughs> yeah, I think that the whole binge watching thing is my least favorite way to consume content because I lack the self-control to stop. That's right. the problem. And so I, and I know it's not going to be as satisfying an experience, but it's like, I got to know, like, especially shows that really, you know, leave you on that cliffhanger. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, I, I think like that's the best part of the you know one episode a week is then you can go online and people will find like mm. things that you didn't find in the episode and like there's just a whole different yeah. element to it that's a lot more fun than if it's binge worthy like you you're gonna find a spoiler like if you try to search the internet for like cool um easter eggs or anything you're gonna end up seeing what happened at the very end yeah. and then it's ruined that was what was so fun about WandaVision, I think, is is every week, everybody, oh, is this going to happen? What's going to happen? And maybe that kind of bit them a little bit in the butt at the end because people were disappointed their, you know, their sort of theories or what they thought didn't happen. But it was sure fun while it lasted. <laughs> it was, I loved it. I enjoyed yeah. it very much. What about you, Steph? How do you decide kind of what you want to cover on your channel? Oh, man. I mean, I think I have gotten the hang of it now like I think I used to pander a lot more to the audience as opposed to what I wanted to watch like I would be like oh there's a new movie coming out everyone's going to be talking about it I have to cover it but then it would be like something I don't really care about that much and so I like before when I used to review on my old channel I would just I would force myself to review at least something once a month or once a week and if there was nothing coming out that I cared about I would just do it anyway and I just like force myself to watch stuff and I don't think that was great so since then I've I just kind of watch whatever I feel like <laughs> mm -hmm. and um I've also started doing a little bit less reviewing um like timely reviewing like uh, I'm working on a video right now for um I know what you did last summer the 1997 movie which is like not a recent movie but like I was like I just feel like watching this I've never seen it I'm going to talk about it people like it it'll be fun um so I've just sort of been like getting away from the stress of having to be on top of every trending thing that's happening like unless of course it's something I'm really excited about like Midnight Mass I was super pumped for Squid Game um but like I I've been trying to just like let myself care less <laughs> be like you know what everyone's talking about this thing. I don't, I don't need to be in the conversation. It's, it's fine. <laughs> just like take a step back. Yeah. Uh, otherwise I just stress myself out. Yeah. Especially with superhero movies. I like to wait as long as humanly possible. <laughs> Although sometimes it still isn't long enough. Like with the Eternals, I, I waited, uh, a few days at least. And, uh, I could have waited even longer, I guess. But anyway, I wrote up my review and I was, I did enjoy it. We'll talk about that later. Um, but I also the same day I had my reaction for the Lightyear trailer, which I also thought was bizarre and I didn't get it. I didn't like it. And it was so funny because all these people were on my channel. I got like 45 comments on that, on that video. And they were like, I'm never watching your reactions again. And I'm thinking, <laughs> did you not want my reaction? I guess you wanted somebody else's reaction. Like it's my yeah. reaction. Like that's how I reacted. I didn't plan it ahead of time. Like that, right. like what? Reactions and, are brutal. They're and brutal. The, the, they are, the one guy is like, yeah, I would hate to hear your opinions on Spider-Man and Batman. And I'm like, yeah, I think you would. <laughs> you <hate laughs> <to hear> that. <laughs> that's accurate. <laughs> um, it was just funny. It's like, Cause so much of the internet what they want is they don't want your actual view, your actual opinion. They want you to, to verify, to, uh, to uh, validate their opinion and their view. They're not interested in what you actually have to say. They just want you to agree with them, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and so boring. Like it's such a boring life. If everybody feels the same way about everything, like who wants to, yeah. Who wants to live in that way? I don't understand it, but yep. so I, in this, uh, in this, uh, panel, I always like to ask, like, why do you think the female coverage, uh, whether it's reviews, interviews, uh, news, uh, in the world of movies is important? Or do you think 
a review is a review. It doesn't matter if it's a male critic or female critic. What do you think, Jordy? I mean, I think it's extremely important because, I mean, everybody has a different perspective. Um, and, you know, I know for me, there's been plenty of films that I've watched that, you know, male critics or friends or whatever really like, but I'll find these cert like, you know, certain flaws in it um, or how, you know, the female characters are written um, that really turn me off of a film. Um, so I think it's important to have an immense diverse, you know, critic panel watching things because, you know, I remember there was a film even at like South by Southwest one year um, called Tales from the Lodge. And it was kind of like a horror anthology film um, but the, the twist at the end was very, um, offensive to the LGBT community and people watching it that might not be in that community or, you know, have friends or family in that community would probably think, oh, that was a clever twist or whatever. Um, but you know, if you, if you're aware you're sitting in your seat, like sinking and just like embarrassment and anger and just fury. And so I think, you know, having females, reviewing these films almost to like the same level of you know men um it's just really important so that we can call out kind of that you know behavior that we don't appreciate or how we we want to be written in films and portrayed what do you think steph yeah i agree completely i think um there's such a lack of diversity in film critics in general like i think if you have a panel of film critics, it should be like a focus group. Like it should be so diverse because you're not going to get the right perspective of a film if it's all the same type of person reviewing it. I mean, and I think we also, it's such an industry that's like so overwhelmed with like old white men. And I, it's, it's this just, this just wrong. It's just not right. And it's been that way for so many years. I mean, when I was in film school, I noticed it especially because I was like very often the only girl in my class, all my professors were men, like the everyone, I was just surrounded by pretentious film dudes. <laughs> I was just like, get away from me. And it was just so shocking to be like the only woman in this industry, like at least in like my school. And, mm -hmm. and then I was in production. I worked in production for a few years because I, I sort of changed career paths I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do but for a while I wanted to be in production I wanted to be a director and I would be working on film sets and I would literally be the only woman there on every single set there would maybe be one or two others but it was like overwhelmingly men white men and it was just like a really toxic environment I didn't feel comfortable I didn't feel welcome I felt judged I um, I actually got hired as a PA on one set because I was a woman, um, not because they like respected me as a woman, but because they just like wanted to look at me. <laughs> and I heard that firsthand from someone who worked on set and I was like, just, I'm going to go on a rant, but I, no. <laughs> I just, I feel like there needs to be more women in cinema and in the film yeah. industry. And we have so much to say, and we do offer a very different perspective that's important. And I just think there's gotta be more of us girl power yeah i agree i especially when you're dealing with content that is trying to kind of address issues around just female empowerment or that is especially being made to cater to traditional female audiences i think it's really important that we have women looking at this material and saying is it is it good is it bad i mean something like i promise to young women some some of my female film critic friends enjoyed it and others really didn't like it but I think it's really important that we hear those voices especially to a movie like that yeah yeah and I, and that's what we tried to do at Hallmarkies podcast my other podcast that you know obviously that's that's a medium a film that is being made predominantly for women and so I think it's really important to have a critic's voice in there saying are they doing are they doing these rom-coms well or are they not you know, and to have some, that's what I try to bring a little critical analysis to that scene. <laughs> but I think it's also important, like in the horror scene, you know, you have the, the final girls and the other things like that. Like, is that being done well? Is it, or is it, you know, is it cringy? You know, is it not working? I think it's really important to know. Yeah. Especially in the horror, like 
genre well and I've always felt like most of the fans are always men too so even growing up like once I started really liking horror movies trying to like have a discussion with like my guy friends about it and just I don't know like them sometimes like talking down to me a little bit especially if I like liked the gore and stuff they'd be like oh you like that like I don't know it's like so petty and like immature and um and I'm sure like you know reviewing like superhero stuff like I remember be- being a kid and going and seeing like Spider-Man 2 in theaters and like having my guy friends be like do you even know who like this character is? and it's just like I've been stopped on the street before by men and like if I'm wearing a Marvel shirt and they'll be like who's that and like quiz me <laughs> yeah <laughs> like weird yeah yeah I mean I've like literally considered stopping reviewing superhero movies because I just get so much of that and I did I almost stopped reviewing them and then I was like I'm not gonna let them get to me like I I want to be the girl that reviews the superhero movies like that's cool and they're fun and I enjoy them but yeah that there's like some angry angry boys that come to my channel and they're like you don't know what you're talking about you've never read the comics and I'm like well yeah sure well it's so crazy when because I famously did not enjoy Shazam I'm like the only person who didn't care for it and I when my when my score got posted on Rotten Tomatoes I was the first woman and one of only like three negative reviews on the site and there were whole websites that literally told their people to target me and it was intense and (laughs) I after that I did have to take like a little bit of a break from covering superhero movies because it's not really my main niches anyway Um, Mm -hmm. and it was just such a intense experience I mean I hope that nobody uh, has to get death threats. And I can't even imagine what it's like after what it was like for me just getting one. I can't imagine what it's like for people that get truly targeted, like a Kelly Marie Tran or Ryan Johnson or or Zack Snyder or somebody like that, you know, that's like gets gets that big. I it must be just so overwhelming. (laughs) I can't even imagine because it was even just for one. And uh, but you know, I was, that's part of the reason why I wanted to do this show was to try to kind of get my confidence back in my own viewpoint, in my own writing, because it had really, it hadn't lost it completely, but it had definitely made me a little bit more scared. And I didn't want to be scared. I wanted to be confident. And uh, so that's, what's been the great gift of doing this every month is, is getting that kind of boost up <laughs> encouragement and confidence every month, because there's nothing like the superhero fans. They are intense and crazy. And yeah, it's, it's overwhelming sometimes. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so my next question I, I kind of like to ask is, do you feel worried or optimistic about the state of film? In one hand, I think there's cause to be optimistic because there are so many outlets these days to to produce your movie and that we would never have had before in it and uh so many different communities that are able to have their their stories told uh and i think that's really powerful um but obviously we have lots to be concerned about with you know with theaters and you know bouncing back from covid and all this other stuff that we have to kind of worry about uh what do you think uh jordy I am a painfully optimistic person so that's the side that I lean towards um but yeah I mean I'm just I'm always kind of just watching and seeing like how things are going um but I mean I I think that the the switch especially with like putting things on more streaming platforms and releasing them in theaters has been really nice because I've always heard from a lot of people just like for accessibility um, for people who can't go to theaters. So I think like that's a great move. And I, I mean, at least here in Chicago, like no theaters have really closed or anything. Like even the small theater near me is like thriving now. Um, But yeah, in, in terms of like the entire industry as a whole, I mean, definitely always still work to do but like you said everyone can kind of make their own movies now and upload them to YouTube and things like that so everyone can be a filmmaker if they want to and hopefully you know they find an audience I always like finding um horror shorts on YouTube all the time so yeah I don't know I'm I'm a bit more optimistic about things maybe (laughs) 
What do you think, Steph? Uh, I'm also, I'm optimistic, I would say. I think I'm more optimistic than pessimistic. Like I, I, I see the challenges and all of that, but I do think we're heading in a good direction. I think we've definitely been making strides as far as like diversity goes and like obviously still so, so much more work to do. But like, I think as far as that side of things of the industry goes, I think we are getting somewhere and that's exciting. So I'm optimistic on that front. And then as far as like theaters and COVID, I think the pandemic has obviously caused a lot of issues as far as that is concerned. But I think it's also given us like a new chance for like, creativity. And I think we have, but there's been uh, so many films that have come out of the pandemic that have been really inspiring to me as a creator and as a filmmaker, like, I mean, I look at like, I don't know, Bo Burnham's Inside, which isn't technically a film, but like he literally like wrote and produced and filmed and created this entire like comedy special in his, room and like it was on Netflix and like they just let him do it and they were just like yeah we'll just put this on Netflix like that's so cool and inspiring to be like well I could do that like pff, easy um I mean not not easy but <laughs> he makes it look easy <laughs> and like I don't know if you saw the horror movie host that came out uh the Blumhouse film that's all over zoom and it's like a pandemic horror movie but like that never would have happened and it's honestly like one of the best horror movies I've seen in a pretty long time and it was also really inspiring like to see a film with such a small production value and like literally just shot on a webcam but the story was so good and it was so scary and it was so thrilling and like that was just really cool to see like it, it was cool to see how people were like all right this is the situation we're in these are our limitations what can we do about it and then like still make awesome movies despite all of that. Like, that's crazy. That's so cool to me. So mm -hmm. I'm optimistic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, as an animation fan, it's been very exciting because that's probably been the medium most of all that has been able to thrive during the pandemic because they have been able to do the most work from home. And it's really cool. I mean, when you watch any of these films from this year, whether it be Raya or Luca, or Vivo or any of these films, it, you know, they say in the credits, this was all you know, done at home by the artists you know, it, for, from Pixar or DreamWorks, whatever it might be. And so that's been very exciting year for animation. And I think it's been a very, in general, a very good year for animation. And I'm just really excited to see what even comes up next year, you know, once they've had a you know, whole, pretty much the whole projects would have been done uh, in the, uh, uh, in the pandemic, but yeah, there's been some really fun, fun movies. I really liked, uh, it was at South by Southwest. There was a comedy called, they called it recovery then. And now they're calling it stop and go. I think recovery was much better, but whatever. <laughs> and, uh, is just a very small budget. These two, uh, sisters who are going to try to get, they're going from New Mexico to Washington state to get their grandma from a COVID infected nursing home. And it was so funny. I was laughing throughout and yeah, it's just a good example of people who took this crazy time and made something fun out of it. So I appreciated that. I really did. All right. So what we like to do is end this uh, panel talking about our unpopular opinions. We've mentioned maybe a few of them. Uh, and then we talk about something that we're proud of. As Jordy, what about you? What is an unpopular opinion? Whether it's you liked something more than everybody else, you didn't like it, everyone else loved it. And what was that experience like for you? Yeah, I, I'm always so nervous to have like an unpopular opinion. Like we've discussed, it's scary <laughs> to like put that out there because I'm like, oh no, someone's going to yell at me. Um, Especially but once I, you're on Ron Tomatoes, that really yeah, makes it yeah, very different, yeah. Really amps up the stakes and I'm always yeah. nervous. Um, I will say one of my unpopular opinions, I guess, but ended up working out very good for me, I guess, um, was that movie, The Boy that came out in like 2015. I hated it. Like I hated it so much. I hated the twist. I like wrote like a scathing review. I was like, it was good until then. Um, 
and I just like posted on Twitter. This is like very early into my like review career. Um, but a podcast, someone that runs a podcast actually saw it. And because he was like, I actually liked the movie. Like, I don't agree, but like we connected, got invited on the podcast. That's how I got invited to South by Southwest. And like, that's how it kind of like rolled into like what it is now. Um, so sometimes unpopular opinions aren't as scary, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, especially when you have somebody who's like willing to have a discussion, that's yeah. the key. Yeah. yeah. It's not like he was like, oh, like that sucks. And this is why it was just like, we both had two very different perspectives mm-hmm. of the film and that's that's it and it was nice <laughs> yeah what about you Steph um I mean reviewing superhero movies I always have unpopular opinions and they're always very controversial um but I actually think my biggest uh is probably a very recent one which is Dune which I did not like <laughs> and everyone around me loves it and is obsessed with it um And I haven't even posted my review yet because I'm a little scared. (laughs) Um, I I wasn't planning to review it, but I saw it and I really didn't like it. And I just started like jotting down my notes. Um, And then I just like, I just kept writing and writing. And then I ended up with like a five page document of like just all the reasons I hated it. And I was like, I guess I should do something with this. So I'm I'm going to shoot a video talking about why I didn't like it, but I'm just Mm -hmm. like, not looking forward to everyone attacking me and I posted on Twitter that I didn't like it like it was literally I tweeted Dune bad I didn't say anything I didn't say any reasons I was just like Dune bad and I got like all these messages and all these replies like what are you talking about it was amazing and just like attacking me like oh well you probably didn't like it because it's you know it's only the first part did you know it's only the first part and I was like yes I know it's not only the first part it's still a bad movie Mm -hmm. and just like all of these like everyone just got so defensive and I was like this is gonna be fun yeah. <laughs> no I don't blame you at all I think maybe it helped me a little bit with doing the fact that I had very low expectations on like most people that were super hyped for it because I really didn't like the book and so I was just kind of and I guess I gave it a marginal recommendation just because I felt like it did a good job of of telling that book like it's not my favorite book but I don't know, like for fans, the people who do like it, I'm like, they did a good job. I can't imagine them doing better, but it's still, (laughs) I don't know. It was a weird, it was a weird one for me, but I know it was just like, it was, it was fine, but yeah, yeah, I totally get it. It's definitely not. I mean, these people are like, it's a masterpiece. I'm like, yeah like I, I don't know about that guys no <laughs> I still don't watch it I'm scared I'm like what if I don't like it and <laughs> like I'm so nervous to watch <laughs> I don't know to me I put it like right in the same as like sort of what I call like spectacle sci-fi and I don't really understand why certain ones of those people just like think are masterpieces and other ones of those people think are just absolute train wrecks like I don't see why Dune is so much better than uh, Valerian like to me they're pretty close actually I don't really I mean I guess the casting's a little better but I I want like like Timothy Chalamet yeah yeah the casting's a lot better I guess but I don't know I feel like they're pretty close actually in theme and facing and you know visual they're both beautiful so but you know people are like that's a terrible movie I'm like really it's fine (laughs) to me but I don't know it's funny I can totally see where you're going with that the one that I liked that like hardly anybody else liked I thought it was a hoot was Venom Let There Be Carnage Venom 2 I don't know I walked out of that screening and I was like everyone's gonna love this this was so funny I was laughing throughout and just this whole like buddy comedy thing between uh (laughs) um that I thought was so funny between Venom and Eddie and like, for me, my bar is actually very low in comedies. If I'm laughing, then it succeeds. It's done its job. And I don't really care that much. Like if it has this great plot, I thought the plot was sufficient for the, you know, it was fine. And it was funny. I just, I was laughing throughout the whole movie. So I, I don't know, that's, I guess, an unpopular opinion that I had. And I mean, yeah. the fact that people can't handle the fact that I like venom 2 more than eternals and i'm like they're it's apples and oranges they're totally different but i had more fun watching venom 2 i laughed way more 
I just enjoyed it way more. And I didn't like the first Venom, so I wasn't expecting oh. to enjoy it. But I don't know. I just thought that that back and forth between the two of them was really funny. So that's kind of my unpopular opinion. Yeah. Lately. I haven't seen Venom Let There Be Carnage yet, but I loved the first Venom. And oh, I, okay. I forgot about that. That's also an unpopular opinion that I have because most people did not like Venom. Mm-hmm. And I loved it. I thought it was so fun. It was like the cheesiest, like, it felt like a 90s superhero movie which is like the best kind of superhero movie because they're horrible so like it wasn't good but it was good you know like it was so fun I mean I, you yeah. said you didn't like it but I thought it was so funny yeah and I just yeah. like I can't wait to see the second one I think I'm gonna love yeah. it <laughs> I hope you like it. I'll be very curious to hear what you think uh because I it's one of those because I saw it early and I walked up thinking, oh, everyone's going to love this. This was such a good time. And it was only like 97 minutes. It was in, out, on, on with my life. And uh, <laughs> people were like, this is terrible. <laughs> okay, whatever. Uh, so that was funny. But let's talk about something that we have done, a project, something, a review we've written, something, uh, a video we've made, something like that, that we think was really good. We're proud of. What do you think, Jordy? Oh, I mean... I think I'm always really proud whenever I like get a random film in my inbox and I'm like, sure, this sounds like kind of intriguing. It's from like, you know, up and coming filmmakers or something. And then I end up really enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, publishing like a good Rotten Tomatoes review and they've maybe had like two others or something and like helping elevate that. Like I think recently um, it was over it was over 31 days of Halloween. And I'm blank, totally blanking on the film right now. But, um, you know, even like the filmmaker reached out to me on Twitter and was like, thanks so much for, you know, the positive review, like, um, you know, putting it on Rotten Tomatoes and stuff. And like that stuff just feels really good to me because I feel like, you know, with bigger movies, even though I love those and I'm such like a popcorn film person, um, they've already made their money and they're going to get a new job after that. You know, they've got stuff lined up. Um, but I always feel really good when, it's, you know, up and coming filmmakers that you can kind of like lift up a little bit. That's, yeah, you know, that's the best. I recently just had that happen with a new Christmas movie that's coming out next week. I haven't gotten on Rod Tomatoes yet because they wanted me to wait until the week of release, but, uh, but I, you know, promoting on social media and everything like that, it's called see you next Christmas and it's very low budget. Uh, but I thought it was funny and I thought they did a really good job. And uh, I was tweeting about it and I'm like, oh, this is so hilarious. Make sure y'all check it out. And the, uh, uh, the writer and filmmaker, she reached out and uh, was grateful and I ended up interviewing her. And so that will go up on Hallmarkies next week. And that definitely feels really good when you can do that kind of a thing. Uh, and I've had that with many times with little animated films, cause that's kind of my niche and uh, being able to you know, tell people, oh, check out this. Uh, there was a movie a couple of years ago called Sergeant Stubby, an American hero <laughs> that was just made by this small new studio. And I thought the animation was really good. And I thought it was a very well done story. They managed to like not make it traumatic, but yet not like glorify war either. I thought they did a very good job and it was just such a cute doggy. I mean, come on, Sergeant Stubby. And so I was telling everybody to watch it. And I'd say almost everybody who watched it was like, yeah, you're right. That was really cute. And uh, so <laughs> I think that is very satisfying. You can hopefully use your powers for good rather than mm-hmm. evil. <laughs> yep. What do you think? Uh, what's one for you, Steph? Um, well, I, I actually agree with that. I was thinking of something else, but that actually resonates with me more. It's just like, like I like to review movies and talk about movies and like make YouTube videos because it's fun and I really like to entertain And that's like a passion for me, but it's also nice when you realize that like what you're doing is actually like potentially helping someone like helping a small filmmaker who maybe doesn't have the exposure that they need or um, I don't know it's I feel like a lot of times we watch movies and we kind of forget like all the work and passion that went into them, at least like smaller films. Like I know a lot of big budget films, there's not a lot of passion that goes into those, but um, like reviewing a smaller film and then seeing like, I, I reviewed a couple years ago, um, Spree, the Joe Keery horror film, which is very good, I highly recommend it. <laughs> um, it's also kind of similar to Host. It's like the entire movie is an Instagram live and it's like about an Uber driver who starts murdering 
hit the people in his Uber. <laughs> it's really good. Um, but anyway, I reviewed it and the director uh, reached out to me on Twitter and retweeted my review and was like really thankful and was like, this is so like, thank you so much for watching our movie. Like we worked really hard on it. And I was just like, like, I just like forgot for a moment that like, oh yeah, there's like people behind me like, that care about this. And I'm just like, like, I don't know, that was just cool to like have that interaction. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I agree. I love when that happens. Um, and yeah, I, it just sort of reminds me of like why I'm doing this. Like it's, be, it's not just yeah. to like write about film, like there's more to it than that. And it's, it's more about like people in the community and supporting each other and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I especially love when I get to do, I do a lot of interviews and I especially love when I get to do an interview with somebody who is playing the best friend or playing, you know, like a supporting role that usually doesn't get uh, much attention, but is, you know, hardworking uh, actor. And those are some of my favorite interviews that I get to do I, and just getting to talk to people about their experiences. And, uh, and I, I think it feels good. Like there was this one movie of homework movie uh, where I thought the supporting character named Marta, it was called um, True Love Blooms, I think is what it was called. Anyway, I thought she was hilarious. She made me laugh and I had her on and I was just like, I think they should make a whole movie about your character. And you could just tell that it like meant something mm -hmm. that, you know, her little part that somebody really liked it. And so I, I think that that is very true. And uh, even if it's just the other people in our community that we get to work with and build up is also, I think, really valuable if you can find somebody who only, you know, maybe like, not that I have that many subscribers or, or uh, numbers, but I can find somebody who is just starting and hopefully give them some encouragement. That can be a really positive experience too. And really fun. Good way to make friends. So, well, very good. Thank you so much to both of you for coming on. I really appreciate it. This was really fun. And uh, I really enjoyed talking with both of you. And I want you both share how people can follow you and your channels or your, or your um, content. What about you, Jordy? Yeah. So um, my website's JordyReviewsIt.com and I'm JordyReviewsIt on Twitter and Instagram. Great. And what about you, Steph? Yes. Uh, I am Steph Koza on everything. And my YouTube channel is called Steph Koza vs. the Movies. So you can find me there. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. And please, uh, if you are listening to this on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We really appreciate it. And if you are watching on YouTube, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Appreciate that so much. Also have our merch store, which has the logo for Female Film Critics panel uh, shirts and other, you can make whatever you want with it <laughs> uh, on our Tee Public store. So check that out, would really appreciate it. And then also we have the patron group and I would so appreciate any support on there. It's a lot of fun and we have watch alongs where we have every month uh, talent come and we watch one of their movies and we get to hear the behind the scenes of uh, that movie. It's really fun. So check it out. I would really appreciate it. All the information's in the description. Thank you so much, ladies, so much. And uh, we'll talk to y'all later. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>